Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Nicholas Lion Rider, and I am live, so it's not a video. So, today we are going to be making some creepy crawlies. So, I haven't really done a modding live stream in like a few. Is this my first modding live stream since I've been back, actually? I think I think it actually might be. So, uh, yeah, I haven't made a modding video or live stream in months. So, today we are uh, going to be jumping right into it by making all sorts of different, you know, bugs, insects, arthropods, arachnids, whatever you want to call them. All to just kind of uh, fill out the, you know exhibit prop pack so if anyone is you know aware i have an existing exhibit prop pack that i've had for a while now and it includes things like some snakes and uh it's mostly snakes to be honest it, it was snakes iguanas and i think i threw in like one or two other animals but at the time that was really all the pack had it was mostly my green anaconda mod my I added a boa constrictor and emerald tree boa and an eyelash viper and then I was commissioned by Bold to do the three iguanas. And so very popular mod but obviously it was a thing that I think a lot of people needed um, was the insects and stuff. So I thought you know it was about time that I actually kind of made a, a, a pretty substantial sized update for the exhibit prop pack. And so I've been focusing on groups. So the first major update I wanted to do was adding all of the different insects. So I added all of the base game insects already. So if we want to take a look, I'll actually place down like some uh, plaster or something first, and then we can take a look at all of the individual base game insects. And then I'll show you some of the new ones that I've already, you know, kind of added uh i had some minor help leaf made a single insect for me he made the banana slug because that was his first mod he ever made he actually removed it from nexus and i'm like what ha what happened to it and he's like i'll make a new one if you're gonna be doing this so that would be a thing my brain thought you meant things like bugs that were gonna crash the game i was like creator chaos uh yeah I, that was kind of the joke was uh, everyone was going what do you mean you're adding bugs to planet zoo the game already has enough of those and it's like yep i know um but we definitely wanted to you know try to have some fun with it and make something that hopefully a lot of people would enjoy so i'll just kind of go in alphabetical order I have currently the animal tag, which I do like. I This was an idea I had very early on when we were doing different tags for the, you know, Planet Zoo modding scenery type deal. We wanted to make sure that we all had consistent uh, tags for stuff. So of my, bird, my Birds of the World pack and the Exhibit prop pack, I wanted to have a consistent animal tag. But now that I have so many, I almost want to split them up and add kind of subcategories probably under the property tab where I don't know if it would be under property or I make a custom filter or something but I'll basically make it so that it'll be like arthropod reptile amphibian reptile slash amphibian so like herpetile it'd probably be arthropod herpetile bird mammal and that'll that way you can just kind of search up all of the insects at once and that sort of thing because otherwise like you look up animal you're flooded with birds so i want to make sure that you know what you're looking for is going to be easy you're also going to be seeing a lot of banana slugs and that is because i have already taken the liberty of making all of the prop animals that we're going to be doing today ahead of time uh coding wise but if i were to click on any of these they, they would crash my game except for the praying mantis which Unfortunately, I don't think the two mantis species that I wanted, the praying mantis and the orchid mantis, are going to work because, as you can maybe tell by now, a lot of these insect models did come from Animal Crossing New Horizon, and they actually work incredibly well with the Planet Zoo art style. They look so good next to it, so much so that I don't even think most people would be able to tell at first glance which ones are from planet zoo and which ones are from animal crossing because they all just fit so well together uh obviously the butterflies are of note but like the this uh rhinoceros beetle no one would probably be able to tell that that is different from the giant burrowing cockroach or something that's in the base game so with that being said we'll do all the base game ones first so starting off we have the amazonian giant centipede 
Then we have to go through all the birds until we get to our next base game, insects, which are actually the arachnids, which are the Brazilian salmon pink tarantula, the Brazilian wandering spider. Then we have the giant burrowing co cockroach, which is way bigger than I thought, to be honest. I thought they were going to be significantly smaller, but turns out they're huge. <laughs> and then we also got... Um, the giant desert hairy scorpion uh, as well as the giant forest scorpion which ironically is smaller and I think that's kind of funny then we got the giant tiger land snail which is pretty great love that one that's, let me turn the time of day off and stuff that was kind of annoying uh, we got the goliath beetle probably a pretty pretty cool looking beetle the giant uh, the goliath bird eater which is like the biggest spider in the game then we got, uh, what's the next one? Malaysian giant leaf insect. So, you know, that's a fan favorite from the Southeast Asia pack. Probably, I would argue it's probably one of the most popular bugs in the game. And then finally we have the last two, which are the sacred scarab beetle, which is a itty bitty, itty bitty little bug. It's the smallest bug in the pack so far because it's a dung beetle, but looks pretty good. And then now uh, we have Titan Beetle. So that is the final insect. So these are all the base game insects. Should be 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I forgot two arachnids. So where are the others? Or what am I missing? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm missing a spider. What spider am I missing? Anyone know? It's probably like something stupid. Um, oh, yep, Mexican red knee tarantula. So that is the last one. Look at the guy. This is probably my favorite tarantula. Looks pretty good. I like the coloring. But looks pretty good. <laughs> You're modding my ex into Planet Zoo. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is very interesting. So these are all the, you know, obviously base game insects and whatever. And so from them, we made a couple of what I consider to be a common uh, zoo specific bugs that we did want and I'm going to be including them. So Leaf made the banana slug. This was his first mod he ever did. And this was obviously based off the, the, the snail. But he did make some modifications. Originally his original mod just had it so it changed uh, the snail to be yellow. Now he actually modeled it so it looks like a slug and it's different. So barely looks any different but it is technically different and you can technically see he added the division of color so that is also a thing similarly i had to include this because i needed it in my life the madagascar hissing cockroach i needed it <laughs> it was just i'm working on a madagascar section in an ocean state right now and i was like i need to have madagascar hissing cockroaches they're like probably one of my favorite insects so I included that here and so those two I believe are the ones that we have made custom like totally from scratch so far but there are more to come and then obviously we have a ton from Animal Crossing that we've ported over so we got the rhinoceros beetle which is probably my favorite it looks very very cool and similarly we also have the Hercules beetle I don't know where that one is uh, where is that one? Give me a sec. Hercules beetle. Also, very cool looking beetle. And they work really well. So, fun fact about these, and you're going to see that today when we work on more of the beetle species. Because I have a few beetles that I wanted to do. Basically, what I did was I kind of took the legs from the base game, you know, Planet Zoo beetles. I think I used the titan beetle as a base or, or uh, the goal yep so i use the titan beetles legs as a base and then just attach them on the bodies of the animal crossing models just so that within planet zoo they had consistency so that was very good and now i guess yeah we can kind of address the elephant in the room which are, are the big thing which are butterflies of course so we have a lot of butterfly species at our disposal all from animal crossing and they look awesome so we have the agrius butterfly and I'll include moths in this category. We have the Atlas Moth, very cool species. Uh, definitely probably one of the prettiest moth species. Then we got the Common Blue Bottle Butterfly, 
We have the common butterfly. We have the emperor butterfly. Uh, what else? The great purple emperor butterfly. The Madagascar sunset moth. Also very cool. Kind of want to include this in my Madagascar section because it looks very cool. This is what Animal Crossing considers their generic moth. So I went by the official name or the scientific name that they had, which is like Japanicus something. So basically I translated it to be Japanese moth. So that is what me and my friends kind of agreed would be the most appropriate name to call generic moth based off of Animal Crossing the Japanese moth. So that seemed about right. Monarch butterfly, probably the most famous butterfly species um, out of all of them. Then we got the paper kite butterfly, very cool. And then now we get to the big boys. So we got the peacock butterfly. This is very pretty as well. I love the coloring and stuff, even though I hate peacocks in real life. And now we got the big boys. So we got the Queen Alexandra's uh, bird wing, which is the biggest butterfly in the world. And then we have Raja Brooks bird wing, which is pretty similar in size. It's, it's a bit more long though. So it's definitely cool though. And then finally we have the last two, which are the tiger butterfly very pretty you know it's kind of simple and the yellow butterfly which is very you know small but all together you know you got a lot of butterflies at your disposal so i want to see if i missed any but it looks like i probably got them all um yeah that seems about right so here are all your butterflies and moths they definitely look really really cool are you gonna make a few chrysalises and cocoons i might Honestly, that because that's the other thing is now that I'm making all these insects, I need to kind of make exhibit prop pieces to compensate for the insects, obviously. Because you can't just make insects and then just be like, yep, cool, we're good. Obviously, a lot of these are going to want certain um, props to go alongside them. And I'll kind of show you an idea I have in mind that I kind of teased on Bro Nation a few days ago but it's stuff that I've been working on in the background. So the other thing is, this is my new favorite, by the way, the, the stick bug, stick insect, whatever you want to call it, walking stick insect. It looks awesome. I love this thing. This is like such a common thing in zoos. And so I was very, very excited to put it into Planet Zoo. So this is definitely an awesome looking bug. So stick bug, very cool as well. Similarly, I think I have maybe one other that I got from Animal Crossing so far. Oh, that could be it. Yeah, that might be it for now. So I think that pretty much is all of them that I have so far. I have plans for others, and that's going to be what we're working on today. But before we do that, I do kind of want to show off uh, what I was talking about with other things that we're going to be doing for the you know exhibit prop pack i know i have so many packs now i'm working right now and i'm sorry i haven't been like uploading as much lately i've been doing a few ocean state videos and stuff but i haven't been live streaming and stuff because i've been working so hard on 10 packs right now <laughs> i have 10 packs at some form of an update in process so i have obviously this pack i was working on india last stream i had the uh exhibit prop pack i'm working on the north america pack that i've shown off in ocean state i have an update for the safari pack i, I got i think um i have my internal lion rider pack that i use for all of my custom you know personal use mods i have the billboard pack slash gift shop pack that i still got actually i'll show that off because i'm sure everyone is excited about that one so i will show off this little guy Look at this little guy. Isn't he adorable? So I have a whole bunch of uh, little plushies and stuff planned. I, my favorite thing is I added the, this is an idea I stole from Mergy when uh, she was working on her little thing, but I gave it a little Planet Zoo butt tag, which I love. It, it's adorable. And this, is, this was a test. I'm not sure if the final version will include the plush material, because it's not perfect, but basically this was testing out the ability to like add like a fur shader, ugh, excuse me, like add a fur shader to a prop. So I have a whole bunch of things like this. I'm not sure if I want, cause personally, the only thing is you might see that it, it kind of acts like a billboard right now. This cause it was a test 
but I'm hoping to eventually have it so that it can use uh, flexi color because I, I think it's justifiable to want flexi color plushies because they're pretty common. So it's definitely going to be really cool. I got here when you were halfway through showing off the bugs. Um, so yeah, so that's the only thing is I'll have to see. I might keep it fluffy. I might make it, you know, something else. If I can make it fluffy and flexi color, that'll be ideal. But obviously, you know, only time will tell. So don't get too, you know, excited about this being the definite art style that it'll definitely be, you know, fluffy and fuzzy and stuff. It might just have kind of like a more matte or what do I want to call it? Like, let me, let me pull up an example of like a, a plush that I'm thinking of, like the art style. So give me a second. So the, I guess, uh, maybe not this one. So I could go for something like this, where it's like a velvety, that, that might be the case. Or I'm trying to look for like, um, they, what's the, it's, it's a type of like, oh, what do I want to like say? I don't know how to describe that. It's a type of stitching and stuff that is like a bit more flat, I guess. Yeah, something like this almost, but yeah, I'll have to see. So I have a whole bunch of animals lined up for that. I'll probably do that on its own stream kind of soon because I do still want to show off the billboards and stuff in their you know full glory at some point but uh, you know obviously that kind of gives you a, a, a little idea of what's on the horizon with that pack and then there's another thing. <laughs> no the floof must stay <laughs> the floof okay I'll, I'll have to see because maybe I'll make it so that certain animals have a fluffy version as well and you can just choose between them but obviously there's a lot of things yeah, because, like, as Goron said, like, you gotta make pink elephants and blue elephants. It, like, it's very uncommon that, like, you go to a zoo and they only have just the, you know, scientifically accurate coloring. for, Especially for stuff like tigers and stuff. Like, I, I see blue tigers and pink tigers and stuff all the time. And so, I wanted to, you know, I, I kind of designed it with, like, flexi color in mind. But I guess the next thing that I'll show off, so this isn't in the exhibit prop pack yet. This was just me doing a test, but I actually basically did this. I made all the primitives in the game, instead of using their default texture, use glass instead. And so this was just an easy way to kind of visualize in my head what smaller exhibit boxes would look like of varying sizes and shapes and stuff. And so I actually showed this off on Bro Nation, like I was saying. And this gives you a much better idea of, like, you know, different shapes and stuff that we could do using exhibit boxes. You can do kind of like um, half cylinders. You can do these kind of oval shapes, that sort of thing. Um, spheres, if you want, like, a bubble or something. Similarly, um, these, I, I was saying these are going to double as the prairie dog holes or whatever like you see at zoos you know you might want to have something like that or you could have prairie like people sticking their heads up through the prairie dog holes and stuff so i definitely wanted some terrarium shapes and stuff so i'm gonna probably pick my favorites out of the primitive pieces and then probably make some custom ones because obviously like you know even though the primitive pieces are they give me a good reference point for like some of the basic shapes like cylinders and squares and cubes and stuff like that there's still going to be some that are not going to be quite ideal so like as an example like these tubes and stuff i might want one that's this width but a little bit shorter that sort of thing and then similarly of course i'm going to have to make it so that all of the terrarium ground types whether they're the tropical one the desert one etc they all have um, shapes that match the circles and stuff so I like again I apologize these things take a lot of time and I'm a one person team like working on pretty much the entirety of the modding scenery you know side of things like like I said I get like sometimes leaf and NDP and stuff will help me with like individual things 
but on on the on the majority of you know prop situations i'm usually alone so again i do this uh, my own free time so i apologize if it takes a while but i'll at least get you guys the insect prop mods out kind of soonish so that'll be a thing and then the other thing of course is i was saying the exhibits right now the scenery and stuff it, it's great and all but even some of these miraculously the tiny tiny little ex terrarium props that i gave you like these like individual fronds and stuff they're weirdly enough too big for even like some of these tiny terrariums like assuming that i had a exhibit box roughly this size like the size of this cube right pretty pretty standard for like a beetle enclosure or something i don't think that would be so absurd to see a beetle in a cage roughly this size like if i put in a titan beetle in here that seems like an appropriate size tank for a single beetle right that doesn't sound crazy but the issue is with the current exhibit things it's kind of limiting because it's like okay you can kind of fit in some of these props but like even the tiny little rocks and stuff are really really big relative so <laughs> weirdly enough i might need to make even smaller stuff and then i will say i might not need to if a thing that Inaki, who is, he's, I'm so glad Inaki is back. He, he's always like the wizard that like comes out after like a seven, eight month modding hiatus and then just comes back with the craziest stuff. I, I don't, I don't want to make any promises, but him and NDP are very close to making prehistoric kingdom scaling of objects in Planet Zoo. So it would be very similar to PK where you could take any box, like this cube, for instance, you know, and where the gizmo is, you'd also be able to scale it up and down and make it as big or as small as you want. So if that happens, that will be extremely exciting. So he already got it working with guests, which I know that sounds like ridiculous. I'll pull up a photo of it because it sounds really stupid right like in in practice like oh what do you mean like but as you can see he made giant guests so or well in this case it's a giant keeper but he made giant keepers using the scaling tool and so he's working to try to figure it out for scenery but that will be you know we'll have to see if that's possible but if that is that will truly be a game changer that will totally I, I don't care who you are if you don't like mods or whatever if we make it so that you can change if we can add scaling to planet zoo that's game over that's like you know we we win modders win so i really hope that we get it working and stuff and that'll be very very exciting so all of this is possible and i should probably mention this because modding in general is going through a major overhaul right now so you may have seen that you know our mods are getting a bit more elaborate and stuff lately compared to what they used to be obviously we have stuff like oh look i can make you know a, a custom sweatshirt bolds in the chat right we'll make a dunham park sweatshirt really quick hold on i think i think i have it still there you go look oh look we had a dunham park sweatshirt everyone really cool so like that's an example of like just some of the new things that we've been able to do similarly i don't have my audio on right now but i've added it so that all of the bugs when you place them down i can maybe turn it on really quick they uh they place like a, a crunching sound <laughs> which is pretty funny like as if you're like you know having a switching bug so like i don't know if you can kind of hear it yeah so it has like a like a crunch almost when you place them down so we can do a bunch of really really cool stuff and aki was even able to get it so that we could hypothetically um not even hypothetically he had it working because frontier has on the home page of planet zoo a link that basically you know the update newsletter thing on the main menu i can actually go to it quick to show you because we're going to be exiting out of planet zoo in a minute or so but because frontier actually included this newsletter in real time it should pop up here it's connecting right now so this newsletter right that says oh get the europe pack and oh look here's the community goal 
this actually is a link to a website hosted by Frontier at this link. Because of this URL system, we could make it so that we could have real-time internet, you know, as textures and stuff. So I could have like a laptop item in Planet Zoo that is linked to my live stream right now and it would play it in game, which is very, very cool. So there is a lot of stuff that is very, very possible. And so, you know, don't count us modders out just yet, but it's all because we are doing some stuff related to um, some like kind of high level modding stuff. Th uh, and that's going to need to change some stuff about the way that you install mods. Very soon, you are all going to need this mod right here. It's called Axie. It's not publicly available yet on Nexus. You can get it through the modding Discord if you want, or I can, you know... Um, I, uh, people who have some of my newer packs already have it because I've DM'd it to them. But eventually, all mods are probably going to require Axie. So that is going to be a major thing that people are going to have to get used to. But... You know, obviously, you'll download this extra mod, and you'll be able to do a ton of stuff with it. There's even there's some even crazier stuff that I'm not showing you yet, because we're not sure if we want to show it to the public. Because it's stuff that you could do, like, custom cinematics and custom behavior and stuff. Like, so you know how Frontier has, like, tr tr animals doing stuff for trailers, like, walking in a given direction or something? We kind of have a system to do that now, so a lot of stuff. But I've I've been droning on for you know way too long talking about like you know here here's the future. Let's do the here and here and now, getting some stuff in Planet Zoo. So I have already like I said taken the liberty of porting over a lot of insects. So we're gonna start over and uh, start working on I guess our first insect, which is going to be. I forget which stag beetle. It's a stag beetle. I don't know which, though. It's this one. It's number 36. It's whatever this one is. Anyone speak Japanese? Hosuka Kaku Wagata. It's a stag beetle of some kind. I forget which. Um, but I guess we'll start off by just do doing the textures quickly. So, gotta open up trusty... Uh, Photoshop first and then do all of the textures so I actually am going to start off by doing this so I think similar to the other insects I'm gonna make sure that they use the legs of the existing planet zoo beetle just so that it's all consistent so I want to make sure that there's some consistency there and so that's probably the smartest thing we'll do. So, And then the other thing is obviously the Animal Crossing textures aren't nearly as high of quality as Planet Zoo stuff. So you might see a texture quality drop a little bit. But I think it'll be pretty good. So we just got to basically... This is the majority of what I do all day. <laughs> is If I'm not coding, which is even more boring than this, like I'm just going through and making... Um, you know, if it, I mean, sometimes we might take a break later and do an actual custom animal. I wanted to do an American burying beetle, and so we might be doing that by the end of today's stream. Just because I wanted to, you know, do something else that isn't just copying textures, pasting over models, doing that sort of thing. And that would maybe give us a little bit of a break to work on. I think that is all fine, so I think we have pretty much everything we would need except am i missing the opacity yeah we might need the opacity change so one moment would i need that let me think how important is the little spikes and stuff I should probably do that regardless though. All right, so it looks like I might be taking some stuff from one of the other models quickly. 
So we'll do this. We're going to open up one of the other later models. We'll do 28, for instance. And using this new system that Anaki set up, everything is uh, number oriented. So all I have to do to data edit and stuff is change 28 to 36. And then that's it. And that's all I had to do, which is extremely useful. So we're going to make this a texture file because I want to use a custom FDB for it. With how small the bugs are, I doubt that the texture quality matters. It doesn't at all. Like, the majority of the texture quality is related entirely to the normal map. So that is the main uh, reason why that is a thing. But yeah, so this will allow me to, by, by changing the texture to use an opacity channel, I'm going to be able to essentially make it so that I can have the little mandibles of the an antennae of the insect. So that, that'll, it'll just make it a little bit better for me. Alright. What am I looking for? Open that texture. And paste this in. There we go. File, save as, PNG, overwrite that. Now we do the normal map. Off topic, but I was just thinking it would be pretty cool that the Wolves Glennon mod I commissioned ended up being in the Safari pack. Oh, it was cool that it was, yeah. Yeah, eventually, like, a lot of the Af African species ended up in the Safari Pack. Um, there's a lot of stuff that should be in the Safari Pack still that isn't. Um, but we're trying... I, I, I need to talk to Leaf, because we have to update the Safari... He's been updating individual mods now for a while. I literally... <laughs> I'm so grateful for Leaf in the regard that I have literally no patience to update my own mods anymore. And so, if it wasn't for Leaf, all of my mods, which, I, at this point, I will say, there's not many animal mods that I have left at my disposal <laughs> um, that, you know, you guys know me for anymore. The main wolf is pretty much it, and every other mod is some form of, you know, just irrelevant at this point, which I find funny. Whether that be, like, the different types of, I don't know, beetles or, or uh... Like, the alligator is irrelevant, the penguin was irrelevant, the rhino, all of that stuff is totally useless now, and I just find that funny. Even stuff like the orca and stuff, like, that used to be, like, oh, wow, that's so cool. I feel like, you know, for consistency's sake, with the amount of, like, endless ocean fish and stuff, I'm surprised that, like, no one's just tried to, like, make that. Actually, someone actually is redoing the orca using their own custom model. Um... And they were doing that kind of recently, so... Even that, I am kind of correct about. So, basically, when I think about mods that I've done that are just totally me at this point, it's like a handful. But, um, Leaf's kind of taken over most of them now. So, let's do this for opacity. Now we gotta do the roughness maps. So again, I apologize if adding insects isn't nearly as exciting as talking about modding, but this is the reality of what- <laughs> This is the reality of modding, is the majority of the time you're just hanging out being like, Cool! Isn't this fun? This is real exciting. Though, that, that, that's the thing is a lot of people are like, well, if it's so like difficult to mod and like, you know, why do you still do it? It there is something rewarding about just like once you're done with it though, like have, seeing it in game and stuff, and just being like, cool, I added some content to the the game. Now. Even if no one asked for it, I added some some content. So we'll do that. That looks pretty good. So textures seem to be good. So, I believe this is the model, so we're just going to import... I think I made it an OBJ for simplicity's sake. It does look like that. So, this is the 
Oh god, it begins with a C. Let me look up. I have, I have Animal Crossing wiki pulled up right now because we're going to need it for some info about these guys. But these, I believe, are the Cyclomantis Stag. So the Cyclomantis Stag is... Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so they can grow between anywhere between 26 and 110 millimeters. So that's a pretty big uh, range of, you know, size difference. But we can basically just do this. We can change this to be UV zero. And yeah, I think from there. I think I since we're gonna be using the in-game beetle legs and not these ones that are in Animal Crossing. Which I don't know, maybe I should use them. I don't know. It might not be terrible if I did. But we're just gonna delete all of the, the beetle legs. It's gonna be a lot harder than I thought, apparently deleting them all. But we're gonna just slowly but surely <laughs> delete all of them. I thought I could just control L to select the entire legs, but apparently not. They made it difficult. So we gotta do it manually, which is no fun. So let's see, so we'll grab these, grab that, delete that, grab this, delete that, grab that, delete that. Cool, I think that is one leg done. Delete these, and then there's the other beetle that we're going to be using the leg of in a second. And then the other thing is I have to actually re-UV this because I have it using half the texture so that we can use the leg UVs from the actual beetle. The I think it like I said, I think it's all based off the Titan beetle originally. So now we can grab pretty much all of you and all of you and all of you. Delete that. And then Hopefully this will be good. So what do we got left? We got a handful of little stray polygons. Don't want that one. Cool. So now the beetle does not have any legs. So the final thing that I gotta do before we scale this guy is just take his UVs and make them... Is it from 2D cursor? Yep, there you go. Make them half of what they should be so that they line up with this UV map right here. So, now with that being said, we can kind of scale it down. And yeah, as you can see here, we have the original beetle, and then we should be good. Dunham Park Zoo is having a heart attack currently. Might have to restart my PC. That isn't good. Hopefully, you don't, you know, have any issues, but... So this is the only issue I have as an American. So I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, metrics out there in my audience and, you know, at least Goron and Bold and stuff. You guys all use metric. You're not filthy imperialist system people like I am, which makes it very difficult for me to understand and grasp the concept of in, uh, the imperial system. So for instance, this says it is 110 millimeters. I don't know how much that is, but this is one meter, so I need to actually, even though it's all base 10, I'm actually that stupid that I actually need a meters to millimeter, um, uh, I guess, converter. So we need 110 is 0.11 meters. So then we'll go in here and change this to be 0.11. And then this is going to be the size of our final beetle. So it looks like I, weirdly enough, scaled it approximately right from the get-go, which is kind of funny. Yeah, so it needs to be a little bit smaller, but not by much. So we'll do it kind of like that. And then the last thing we got to do is just make it so that the legs are appropriately sized. So... I think for the purposes of this, I'm just going to basically start pulling apart this beetle and then uh, grab its legs. So, we'll grab these, 
And then I think the only thing left should be the legs, if I did this all correctly. So let's see, so I think here's the legs. I might need to scale them a little bit, but overall not too bad. So we'll scale it a little bit, bring it over to be, I guess, roughly right there. That looks about right. And finally, the last thing is just combining it. And then there you go, we have our beetle. So look at this guy. This is a, a, a funky, weird looking beetle, but this is a, a one that Leaf requested I do out of all of them. So, yeah. I can't believe that you're actually making bugs. So here we go. So now we have the beetle working. So this is a thing that I used to not have to do, but now I kind of do. Um, but I need to make it, and actually this one's not too bad, but basically this is the collider. And so back in the day, we used to not be able to edit colliders of objects, but now we are. So I always need to make sure that I actually make it so that the box surrounds the entire bug so that you don't complain about it, you know, being weird to click on. But it looks like when I join the two together, I join them in the wrong position. So what did I do wrong? I think, is that better now? There we go. So when I join them, I, I join them in the wrong order. So that's kind of a little mini issue. But there you go. You can definitely tell there's a lot, like for each of these insects, I've made about 50 now. Or uh, I'm not 50. I've, I'm shooting for like 50 insects for the final release. But I've made about 30 so far. And or a little bit over like 35 and yeah it is not easy to make these so i've definitely spent a pretty large pretty substantial amount of time working on getting all of these insects working in planet zoo but we will just copy all of these copy paste copy paste copy paste because who cares about lod's there's no way you're going to be filling your thing with like, what are these things called? Cyclamantis beetles? I really doubt you're going to be adding that many to your game where it would be an issue. And they're already pretty reduced as is. But finally, we export it. That's good. So now, the last thing we need to do is take these, take these, paste these, delete the rest of this, and then... I can actually just start injecting these files and we're gonna essentially from this get our final texture map. This is the only process or part of the process that I don't really like anymore. It used to be a little bit easier but basically in order for the new system to work we need dot texture files and nothing else. So all of these DDS and PNG images, we don't really need. We just need the dot textures or dot text files. So I'm basically deleting everything other than them. Getting our final, I guess, material, you could say. Taking that and then we should be good. So the texture is probably open from Photoshop. Let me delete all of these. And then we delete that. Why is it open? What are you... What is using this? There we go. Nothing. And then finally, we hit pack using the new tool. And now if we go in game, our Cyclamantis beetle should be working. Hopefully. So that should be good. I tried to do modding once, but ended up quitting within a week. Yeah, it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a thing. You making bugs? Well, this is Planet Zoo making more, make more bug fixes. Yep, I told you. I told you people would be making that joke all day. Oh, I can also show you my new penguin that I made. <laughs> um, I'll show you the new penguin I was working on. It, it, I, I was like, look, Leaf, I made a new penguin, and then he's like, what did you do? Because this is a new penguin, guys. Did you know? Not notice? It's a new penguin. It's a different species. 
This isn't the African penguin. This is the African penguin. They're very different penguins. This is a Mege uh, what is it? I, I say Magellanic, but it's supposed to be Magellanic penguin. But look, it's so different, right? Because they have an extra band around their neck. That's the difference. But they're a totally different species, so you need to make it. So I have Leaf uh, working on the coding for them. I made a few minor differences to actually make them a, a little bit more distinguished. So the Magellanic is a bit fatter than the other than the African. And similarly, I also made it so that the feet are a bit more grayish instead of pink. What's up, Basic? Haven't seen you in a bit. How, how you doing, buddy? Um, but yes, here we go. There's a new uh, penguin. But let's see if my stag beetle actually worked. Cyclamanus stag? It doesn't look like it did. But it didn't crash, so... What is the issue? It needs to... Okay. So I know, I know the issue here. Butterfly 36. If I change that to be Butterfly 36, it'll show up. So it actually, believe it or not, it did show up in game right there. But because of what I did, it was actually using a different material than it should. So by doing this and then packing it again the next time we go into Planet Zoo, our Cyclomanus stag should be appearing. So that'll be really good. <laughs> Um, so yeah, but basically like I, my, my whole inspiration was Leaf thought he would be ambitious and he's like, I'm going to make a rock hopper penguin. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. And I was bored. So I'm like, okay, why not? If you, <laughs> I'll work on a penguin too. Um, and I know that my buddy Crocs just got some Magellanic penguins from, uh, Zeus Sims United. So I was like, oh, I can make him a mod quick. So here we go. Here is our Cyclamanus stag. There you go. Look at the little guy. Isn't he beautiful? I know he has a banana slug, but you can then kind of look up all the other beetle species if we put them all together. Here you go. Look at all these beetles. All the beetles. Give me all the beetles, everyone. So, I think it looks really good. So, looks like we are on to our next one, which is going to be the something else some other stag beetle i had three stag beetles in a row planned unless do you guys want me to do something else other than other than a stag beetle um because i could also do the there's like another bug but this is going to be the giraffe stag i believe um but again we're going to be doing a very similar process here so changing 36 to 37 and then unpacking this inside of 37. And yep, there we go. So hopefully this one goes a little bit faster than the other one. I should be able to, uh, you know, have some things, you know, a bit more reduced. So here we go. We'll do that. Drag this out. I'll save PNG, copy paste that, grab this file, grab our new texture. This is like a black stag. File save it. Stoppable Sun is not going to do. Grab the normal map. So the Animal Crossing normal maps come in inverted, which is kind of a pain. It's not too hard, I just gotta invert it. Luckily it's just a simple invert. The uh, going from like Zoo Tycoon 3 or something, it actually is a much bigger pain. Because like those files, for whatever reason, are like like some weird messed up normal map which is kind of a shame because like it's the main reason why the black rhino mod on nexus doesn't look quite right because the normal map just doesn't it, it just doesn't work right and i don't know why it's, it's annoying so we're gonna do this uh 
file save, PNG, and we'll do capacity. And honestly, I think the roughness map is fine the way it is, so um, I think we're good with the textures. We don't need them anymore. And frankly, I don't need the DAE file anymore. So we're pretty good. We're in a pretty good position now. So we'll just import our MDL2. We're on 37, I believe. What's 37? I forget. We just did 36, so 37. But why is it a scorpion? Is that supposed to be the case? Because I kind of want it to have the stag beetle body. Yeah. So. I'm actually going to use this one for now. Copy it. File import MDL2 36. Change it to 37. Do that. Grab this. Paste it over the scorpion. We can just kind of move the scorpion out of the way because we don't need it for now. This one I actually don't need most of you, so I can delete, you know, the majority of your body. I'm being so mean to these insects, I'm just I'm being like, oh, you're useless, don't need your body, move the, <laughs> you know, don't need the scorpion, delete you, cool, the only thing I need out of you is your legs, done, cool. So now we are going to import the OBJ from 37, which is the stag beetle, and then... I need to figure out how big one of these giraffe stags is. I believe it is pretty big, 123 millimeters. So I believe that would be 12 centimeters, or 0.12 meters, I think. That seems right. Yeah, that seems about right. would take me to about there that seems about right so this is a rather large beetle which kind of makes me wonder how big is the giant stag because that's the next one we're going to be working on huh that's kind of funny actually so ironically the giraffe stag is huge and the giant stag is quite small which is kind of funny I bet you were one of those kids who tore the legs off spike. No, I'm not a, I'm not evil. But I did I did tell uh, people on my Discord and stuff. Um, I, my cousin was like kind of like an evil person. He once like ran over a praying mantis that we found. We like we found it on our porch. We like took care of it right we kept it in a box and you know we fed it and stuff and it was fine and then we my parents agreed like oh we should release it into the wild so they sent it to um they they sent me my brother and my two cousins a way to like you know go go release it into the wild and we did and it got approximately you know a foot away from us before my older cousin decided to just run it over with his mountain bike and it was horrible <laughs> which it was funny because like at the time my parents were like oh my god it's an endangered species i do not think that is the case i do not believe praying mantises are endangered per se but it was still messed up it was definitely not a cool thing to do um so i think i want to make this a little bit smaller just a little bit though Just because I'm going to have to make the legs bigger. Um, yeah, that seems about right. So, that's good. Delete the material there. Change this UV to UV0. And then we're going to combine it with 
the leg muscles, and if I did everything correctly, which I apparently didn't, because... Oh wait, no, I did. I did do everything correctly. Never mind. Cool. Because I forgot that we don't actually want that. That that was on the 20, 36 instead of 37. So now I paste this in. Now we're good. So I'm going to take this scorpion here. And I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to remove the scorpion. Which should leave it with approximately the material and stuff still attached. Butterfly 36. Is that right? Doesn't seem right. 37. That seems better now. And then I just gotta attach it. So I'll just grab all of that, attach it. We gotta make a bigger collider for this big boy because this one is rather large, so gotta expand it out a little bit. What do you want from the DLCs and updates for Planet Zoo? Um, I'll tell you what I don't want, and that's birds. <laughs> I'm pretty open to pretty much anything else. I get people want birds, but like for me, it just won't be that entertaining of a DLC. Because I just know that whatever system they did... The only plus of birds I could see is if they change the chain link system so that like... Um, Goron, Goron and I have talked about this, like, just, um, combining, or having it just so that, it, like, you just hit a roof button, and then, oh, look, there you go, it's a chain link roof. That, that'd be useful, but other than that, I can't really see myself being super enthralled with whatever birds they would come up with. It probably still wouldn't be good enough to make, like, a recreation bird thing. I'd probably get a couple of birds out of it that I like. Like, I can't imagine they wouldn't do, like, a parrot of some kind, and, like a uh, eagle or something like a bald or golden eagle that just would that would surprise me more if they didn't include birds like that but i don't think that it would necessarily be as entertaining so i'm kind of open for any others if they want to do rainforest if they want to do asia as a region if they wanted to do desert like middle east or you know something like that endangered species is like one that i think would be really good just because you could get a lot of cool species all at once um so i think that would be cool i want realistic animations and behaviors depends how realistic we're talking are we talking about leaf's weird like crit cringy video that he did yesterday that got a ton of it i remember when he said i was watching or um he was making that video and he was like asking me i'm like dude what are you going on about you know it's a very clickbaity title and a lot of people did watch the video and got a kick out of it so um but if he does make like a, a why we need realistic poop and Planet Zoo like they had in Zoo Tycoon video, tell him that was definitely like a thing that I was saying as a joke. I was saying as a joke, he should do that as a video. If it comes out though, don't be surprised and say that I came up with it first. Because I know him and he's definitely going to do that. There's nothing more frustrating that if you've ever been to a zoo with Leaf like I have, um, it's all, it, he will just record animals mating all day. It's just his favorite thing to do. The other day we were at Buttonwood and there were two Mata Mata turtles mating underwater. He was like, dude was like, you'd, you'd swear it was like Nat Geo Wild. He was just like in front of the glass, like camera up against the tank, zooming in on this. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah. He made a poop video. Uh, right. Well, he did the pee video. He said, why don't animals pee? So he already did that one a while ago. Yeah, he, he did that one a while ago. But, yeah. I <laughs> but he is, uh, he is something. Meanwhile, here's the giraffe stag. Looks pretty nice. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. 
I don't know, is it supposed to be this reddish color? Nah, that looks like the textures didn't go through. So g give me a sec, I might have to redo the textures on it. Because it looks like it's supposed to just be black, but for some reason it came up like kind of reddish, which means that... Oh, I know the reason. So what I forgot to do was... Yep, that's, yeah, that's my fault. That's my fault. So before I combine the legs and stuff, I forgot to make it so that the body uses the... Let me see if I can hopefully just grab the legs and separate them. Because the legs use the one texture and then the body uses the other one. So hopefully I can just kind of move it like one over and then I should be able to just grab everything else. Grab this, 0.5 it, 2D it, 0.5 it, grab these now and then move them over negative one and then I think that'll work. Trust that I did that right. So, assuming I did, we should have a giraffe stag. And then we'll just do the giant stag beetle, and then we'll do the cool blue beetle. I forget what it's called. It's it's very cool looking though, so I am excited about that. these textures quickly again. Do that, do that, do that. Do that. Load it in game, and we should have blue, black stags. Um, what's up? I had a similar, like, thing with tortoises. I want and hear me out realistic generic zoo and backstage. Yeah, that's another one that, like, I feel like everyone asks for it, and it's not. There's no point in it, to be honest. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. When people ask for the realistic backstage stuff, I can't get behind it. I can get behind it from like a basic level, but the issue I have is what people are gonna ask for is like, we want realistic backstage stuff. But the people who are going to utilize that stuff are people who aren't gonna be satisfied with whatever they give us anyway. And they're gonna end up making their stuff using gutter pieces and font pieces and piece by piece anyway. So, like, it almost, like, is, like, a weird thing where they a the people who are asking for it are people who are also going to be ignoring those pieces when we get them. Because they're going to not be happy with when Frontier makes them stylized. And I'm, I'm calling that now. There we go. That's a much better stag eagle. I love stag beetles. Look at these guys. They're so cool. But anyways, we have one more stag beetle to go. I mean, we could do more in the future, but I only want to do three for now. Um, we need... Yeah, see, like, remasters for some of the other animals I'd actually kind of be more on board with. Because, like, I think a remaster of, like, a crocodile, like, the, the saltwater crocodile or something, would be a lot more appealing to me than, like, any type of, you know... I don't know whatever whatever people come up with uh, 38 37 change 37 to nope don't want that I don't want to change we're not making that many props 37 to 378 change open change 37 to 38 edit that edit, unpack it, and model 38, and then we're good. Frontier needs to give us realistic mating and give animals the ability to eat guests. 
making animals eat gas would also be kind of cool, but I know that would be against... Fr I kind of want to make a video called that that's just like... If, if we're going to be getting in the clickbait wars again, just make a video that's just called... This video is against Frontier's wishes, and I just list a bunch of things that people say are against Frontier's wishes. <laughs> like, and why we need them in Planet Zoo. Alright. Import OBJ Giant Stag. Here is our giant stag. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little little different thing here. I'm gonna actually use the base game or the base Animal Crossing legs for this one, and just see where it goes. Cause it probably won't be that bad. Most of the other Animal Crossing textures are surprisingly good. But I gotta figure out how big I need this beetle. So this beetle in particular is the giant stag, which ironically is not that large. It is only uh, 75 millimeters. So that would be uh, 0 0.075, I believe. 0 0.075, that sounds about right. Which means he is a little itty bitty guy, relative. He's not like microscopic or anything, but he's certainly not big. And we can move this one out of the way. And yeah, so we're just gonna use the original legs for this one, so I'm actually gonna have to modify all the textures again, but that shouldn't be that big of a deal. So I'm grab you, apply that, give you an appropriate sized do that I guess for the legs. Trying to like see where it would be resting. Like standing, I guess. Cause this guy is fat and short. Do that, stretch it out just a little bit. And then I gotta widen him because he's a uh, he's pretty wide. And just check the material on him quick. He is a 38. And we should be good soon. Do that, do that, do that, do that. And file, export, MDL2, 38. Edit, transforms, export, or golden. Grab you, delete you two. And now we just gotta do the textures. Let's check back in the, on the chat. Um, let's see. They give us basic things like brooms and shovels and house, you know, vehicles and stuff. I like I agree with that. Like I'm I'm not opposed to like at minimum stuff like golf carts and stuff could be cool. Um and I wouldn't be opposed to like if they gave us like some basic stuff like lemonade stands and stuff. Um But it it depends. Like there's a need for general zoo stuff, but it's also like I don't think when people say we need back, we don't really need too much backstage stuff as so much as we need just front stage stuff that is sort of just decor, like, like I guess you, like, front stage stuff that should be backstage, <laughs> you know, stuff like golf carts and stuff. Because, yeah, I don't think we necessarily need to, like, hide stuff like that, but... It would be nice, but like when people say backstage, I think about like realistic backstage feeders and stuff, and I'm like, that's never gonna satisfy anyone. Um, now what 
what else was said. I think they could do a pack for each continent again. Um, I've had that idea where, like, they do the opposite of whatever they did last time. So, but part of me is like, eh, would they do that? I don't know. Like, if they did, you know, Asia gets four animals and a theme this go-around, and so does North America, and then Africa and South America and Australia all get animal packs. The issue I see with that is just areas like Australia, I don't really see them needing an animal pack. Like, I think it's... You can kind of make one, but, like, it would be really difficult to kind of justify it, in my opinion. Um, like, you, you do Tasmanian Devil, Wombat, Wallaby, Platypus, Echidna, Frilled Lizard, and you still need two more. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I guess if you do Oceania, you can do Tree Kangaroo, and then... Are we also going to include, like, oh, Eastern Grey Kangaroo? Now we have essentially three kangaroos. Wow, this is fun. Because, like, Emu, I think, is, like, prime for, like, a bird pack, for instance. So, I don't know. I'm a little hesitant on that one. South America is very similar. I know a lot of people keep bringing up Amazon. And I'm like, the Amazon is one of the least you know, desirable areas, I think, to revisit, because the actual Amazon River is completely covered. We have a caiman, we have jaguars, we have tapirs, we have, um, you know, uh, the river otter, or like, giant otters. So the Amazon River is covered. So then what we're really talking about is a monkey pack. Slash, if you want to throw in a kawadi or something, or an ocelot, but, like, or a sloth. But most of them, I would argue, definitely monkeys. South America, if you extend it to at least include, like, maned wolf and Andean bear, like, kind of branch out from just the Amazon jungle, I might be a bit more inclined to, you know, understand where the de desirability comes from. But, yeah, I don't know. I just hope they do biome packs. I think that's the best bang for their buck. Because if they do biome packs instead of region packs, they're a lot more versatile. I can make a rainforest pack, and that would cover animals from South America, Asia, Africa, parts of Oceania, all at once. And I don't have to be like, oh, well, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel to make eight, you know, uh, South American animals. Instead, we're only giving South America what they need, which is like, you know, sloth and capybara, and then the other animals can just kind of be extra. And that, that's kind of what I would prefer personally. Same thing with Australia. I think uh, the Australian animals that we need are all stuff that could just fit in like a desert pack or something, like a wombat or something, or, I mean, I guess Tasmanian devil is a bit different because it's not from a thing but that could also fit an endangered species so the, the more vague the pack the better capybaras are absolutely cool yes capybaras are the only one i think is certain because we literally have evidence in the files anyone who says well it was scrapped yeah it was scrapped for a reason the reason it was scrapped is probably to make it put it in another pack i don't think they just scrapped one of the most requested animals just because because they wanted to troll us or something the capybara will come at some point it just won't it wasn't in you know the two packs that people thought it would be in which would be like aquatic or um south america but here you go here's our giant stag here's our giant stag and then here's the other stags i can't tell if it's like floating a little bit that's the only thing with these bugs is they're so small that, like, it's actually tough to, like, see how they're placed on the ground. Like, I think I had it so that the legs have it resting where it's supposed to. Yeah. Yeah, it's just little, little itty-bitty legs hanging out there. But, looks pretty good. So there you go. Now we have all of the little stags. So this, this is what we've done so far on today's stream. So we're getting, we're getting there. We're adding a, a bit, you know, going through here. 
Um, what DLC do you think Capybara will be in? Um, it's tough to say. Again, I might assume a rainforest pack of some kind. That's my theory, personally. But, again, it could be South America 2 or something. To me, I, I think that would be even funnier if they just did something as, like, basic as just Continents 2, South America 2, Africa 2. Like, I think it would just kind of be funny. So, here we go. We are going to be working on this beetle, which is called the... what's it called? What is it called? It's a fancy beetle. It's very pretty. The Rosalia Batessi beetle. The only reason I picked this is because it looks really pretty and it works well for like a... Um, what do I want to call it? Like a, a base for the American burying beetle, which like I said, I might do after this just because I want to like take a break a little bit from just copying and pasting. <laughs> And so I might do a little bit of texture work to actually make an American burying beetle. But first things first, we gotta do this one. And then I'll have to see what time it is, because I don't want this stream to go on too long. I was thinking at most two hours. So a little bit of a shorter stream than I sometimes do, but I think that's a a solid amount. Look at how pretty this blue is though. It's like a like a nice cyan. It looks really nice. Let's see what everyone's saying in the chat. Bear pack. Eight new bears. I don't think you can make eight new bears. Three new bears, yes. And I would actually be fine with that. Like if if Frontier started doing those like animal packs that were just small animal packs with like three animals of a given theme like that, I'd be all for that. If they just said straight out, bear pack, sloth bear, Andean bear, American black bear, $6.99, I'd buy it in a heartbeat. Like, even if it would be like, wow, that's kind of a, a, a scam compared to the normal animal, but I don't care. Like, I'll pay whatever they want, even if it doesn't even make sense at this point. Like, if they gave us three, like, like bears are, like, a good example where it's, like, three high-quality bears that would be different from one another. Like, a sloth bear, I, they'd really have to change a lot. You know, that would be a case where I think that would be pretty good. So, I am all for that. Same thing, penguins are another one. I don't think we need, like, an Antarctica pack or anything, but, like, if they wanted to do a pack with three Antarctic penguins, like Rockhopper, Gen 2 Chinstrap or something, I'd be cool with that as well. I think that would be the better way to do it, personally. I was even open to that with rhinos before we got the white rhino in the game. I was like, if they do white rhino, black rhino, Sumatran rhino, even though they're not even like in captivity, I was cool with it. I want microtransaction animal, no, but literally, like I, I get some people say like, oh, we don't want to be treated like the Sims players are. I'm like, I do. I want to be treated like the Sims players. I want you know them to give us animals frequently, and not you know be like. Oh, 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 you gotta wait three months to get, you know, something that you may or may not want. Because, like, for instance, let's say you're, like, your pack is a great pack. We, we all agree with that, right? Imagine if you're one of those people that hates uh, scenery packs, right? People probably would have, I, I assume, would have hated the Europe pack. Because the animals aren't the greatest, they're probably the best from Europe, but, like, they're not the greatest animals by any metric. And if they don't care about props, then I'd almost argue that, like, it's actually probably one of the worst packs for a certain player. Like, which is funny, because just because the animal quality isn't up to snuff with some of the other um, animal packs that we've gotten. Uh, sorry, I'm looking up the size of the Rosalia Batessi beetle. It is 24 millimeters. Oh boy. That's a tiny bug. This is gonna be 
I think this might rival the American Burying Beetle as the tiniest bug. Point zero two five. Oh yeah, look at this little itty bitty guy. Certainly a small bug. But it kind of works, as it'll it'll work as a nice base for us for the American burying beetle. So without further ado, let's combine these two up. Do that, and then I gotta grab you, assign you, and we gotta do the collider. Something kind of like this, give or take. Drag the collider into place. And then I gotta reduce the size from the front. So something like this. And we're good. And this one's just gonna be pretty because it's like a tiny little blue bug. So I feel like if you had like a lot of these in your in a small terrarium, they'd at least show up because they'll be con like contrasting in their terrariums, where you'll be able to point them out just because they have such pretty colors. That's kind of why like I'm I'm selectively choosing bugs from Animal Crossing because like I don't want to do something like a domestic fly or something like that sounds stupid, but um. Certain insects and stuff, um, a little bit more inclined to include. So we'll do that, do that, do that, do that, and do this finally. And then we unpack it into a new folder. Copy, never mind. Undo that. And then we're just going to delete anything that isn't the texture fold files so that we make sure we have a neat and organized workspace. Put this in the appropriate location and we're good. And then we pack it. And assuming I did this correctly, we'll have a pretty little tiny blue bug. Unpopular opinion, aquariums interest me 10 times more than birds. Uh... I 100% agree with you. That I, I would 100 if that's an unpopular opinion, I'm 100% with you on that one. Cuz yeah, I aquariums offer me way more potential than birds do. Birds offer me another way to place down chain link. Aquariums at least can open up the option for like, okay, we can do different types of fish mods, we can do different types of mechanics. Even just the building pieces for a modern aquarium are far more intriguing to me than birds. Like, what's a famous bird zoo? The closest I can think of is San Diego. And that adds props like bird cages and bird houses and nests and eggs and stuff. But aquariums give us, like, new faux rock work and, you know, some... Like, basically, I'm thinking aquatic pack, but, like, way more elaborate with, like, um, different, like, buoys and, you know nautical stuff anchors and barnacles coral like that that stuff is way more intriguing to me um here it is here's our tiny <laughs> itty bitty little bug if anyone could see it hold on this is this is part of the reason there you go you can kind of make it out if i bring it close to the camera here is our bug isn't he a cutie And if we compare him to a penguin, that's how big he is. <laughs> that's how big it is next to a penguin. So it's a very, very tiny little bug. But like I said, under my terrarium example, if you were to make a, uh, if I make a quick little box for us, right? It would probably need just some kind of very small terrarium, not too dissimilar to this size, right? Place it down, 
put it there. Cool. And then we get our beetle. If you put a lot of these in, right, they're, they still show, I mean, obviously these ones are floating, but um, they show up a lot better than some other bugs that could be similar sized, like ants or something, because at least these are blue. At least, you know, from a bit of a distance, you're at least able to see the blue. And you get close up, and there you go, you know? You can still get your fancy little screenshots and stuff, so... That kind of looks cool. Um... Yeah, if I had to choose, I'd take aquariums over birds any day. Because a bird as a statue is a lot more usable than a... F yeah. Like, I want flying birds to, like, you know, move around my zoo and stuff, but, like, I don't really care if it's, like, you know, not that big of a deal. So, that's, that's my take with it. But, you know, I think, you know, so we added four new bugs today. So we added uh, this beetle, if I get the stag beetles. Uh, we added this one, the uh, cyclomatus stag, the giant stag, and the giraffe stag. So that's four, four new bugs, right? So we're growing our collection slowly but surely. So for bug number 40 i want to do a thing to represent rhode island of course and we need to go with the american burying beetle so that is going to be what we're going to work on now now obviously animal crossing does not have the american burying beetle so we're going to have to get a little creative so here's what we're going to do so we're going to look up an american burying beetle american burying beetle and i'll pull that up so that everyone can see what it looks like this is an American burying beetle, right? Looks pretty cool. And as you can see, it looks kind of similar to the uh, beetle that we just worked on. So what I'm gonna do essentially is we're gonna make it so that I just kind of sculpt this beetle that we have as a base into our beetle of choice. So that'll be cool. So I think a thing I might do to start is delete the, I don't know what you call it, the wings of the beetle, because I think the wings, I don't think American bearing beetles have wings, they might, but I don't think they're that important in the grand scheme of things. So with that being said, the antennas are a lot shorter. So I can, I'll actually probably take them from maybe even one of the stag beetles. We're already, so this is like the most, if I said like, hey, here's the most generic bug ever, this is what it would look like. Like just a very, very basic looking beetle. I'm kinda wondering if I, load in the same file will it be textured now no because it's using a different material that's a shame so in that case do i kind of like it with the i'm wondering if i like it with the the little wings i just need to see if an american burying beetle has wings they do so they do have wings. So I think the major difference is going to be the antennas. So we'll get rid of these long antennas from it. And we're going to kind of expand the thorax. So, and that looks pretty good. And then I think another thing I kind of want to do is just um, grab this and then make it a little bit rounder, if possible. They're very uh, fat beetles. So 
So like, I almost want to just round out the top of it. Kind of like so. do that, that looks good. And then we'll go into here again, bring that up, and yeah, I think that gives us a strong foundation for what our American Burying Beetle should look like. I think the only other thing is I just want to pinch the, uh, what is, the, is this the thorax? I forget what it's, I forget my beetle terminology. Uh, they should do birds, like, in PK, where you place down perches and they fly from perch to perch. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, that would be a, a, a simple way to do it, just to make it not super annoying and stuff. I would just wonder if birds were giving them massive problems. Uh, probably not, because, like, birds, the reason I, like... The issue is, with JWE2, we know they have flying aviaries, so they really don't have the excuse of like, oh, well, we'd have to make a system from scratch. It's like, well, you've kind of already done it in JWE now, so like, now that they've done it in that game, they're we're just expecting it at this point. In some form. So... That looks pretty good. So, so now I gotta do the texture for it. So, what we are going to do is we're going to export this item out as a OBJ. So I'm just gonna delete all the joints. And what I should be left with is just this model, which we're going to use in substance. So. American burying people. And at least, I think the normal map and stuff can stay the same. Uh, the only thing that I mostly need to just change is the texture file. Which, I might cheat a little bit here and just, at minimum, just change this to be orange. I know this isn't what they look like, just like, just flat or red or something instead, but it'll just be a way to cheat a little bit and get me at least a foundation to work off of while I do the rest of the pattern. So that should be cool. Will you make an acid beetle? What does an acid beetle look like? We'll see. If I like it, I might. Um... That kind of looks cool. Maybe. I might consider it. It doesn't seem crazy. Oh, I was looking at a blister beetle. The acid beetle looks a bit more in depth. But I'll have to see. Because I don't know how many bugs I want to do <laughs> in this pack. I'm at 40 with the American Burying Beetle. Um, 38 technically since the, what's it called, didn't work out, the two mantis species. So the praying mantis and the orchid mantis, the issue I had is the models I got from Animal Crossing are the only two models that do not have, um, their UVs unwrapped. I have the textures for them, but because they aren't unwrapped, I have no way of actually, uh, using them. Or, you know, in a, any capacity. So that's kind of a shame. So here we go. So here is our basic idea for the American Bearing Beetle. Again, not quite what it looks like, but we can work on that. So for starters, we will start with looking at, um, so the legs need to be black. So that seems easy enough. 
so I can do that quickly. Also, uh, if you haven't noticed, today I'm doing, I decided to use the North America music. I thought I would mix it up from my normal thing. And uh, it is something. I never really uh, listened to the North America music, and it is, it is so certainly something. So, that all looks pretty good. So, the face of an American burying beetle is black. So, we'll do it kind of like this. But they have like a red marking on their head that we will kind of do right now. So, it kind of does this a little bit but it'll be red, so. So let me just grab the color that it needs to be. So this is the kind of marking that is on their forehead. Kind of looks sort of similar to this. rest of it is literally black so that you know that's <laughs> easy enough so now for the thorax they have kind of a similar body actually so it looks like the underside is mostly black so what we're gonna do is do this make a I'm basically making a black texture that I'm just going to use for the underside. So I basically grab this, paste here, and then I'm able to just kind of, I should be able to just paint over this entire area, like so. And then I don't lose any of that detail and stuff but it's black now, so that's nice. And then these darker bits I'll probably reduce, like where it transitions. Because it's not supposed to transition into a dark stripe like that. Ah, uh, texturing. Texturing, but like not doing a super amazing job at it. I'm basically doing a really lazy job just because I also know that like at the end of the day the entire insect is going to be relatively small. Side should be pretty much completely black. That's fine. And then what we're left with is up top, which up top is where the patterning comes in. So they basically have two kind of balls of color, and then the rest is black. They're actually a pretty boring beetle, but um, I don't know. They're just popular. <laughs> They're famous in Rhode Island, that's all I know, so that's why I'm doing them. Because Roger Williams and stuff is famous for their American Burying Beetle program and stuff like that. So we'll do this. And then... I guess I kind of want to do this a little bit. So they have like this big red area along their 
the front of them, and then it goes into black. So it's basically like this, a little bit. Pretty much this entire gray area also is normally like black. Yeah, so like that, that's a bit more accurate. And depending, I might just photogrammetry if I can get, yeah, the pattern. This is actually a pretty good reference, so I might just take this. So if I line this up correctly, I should be able to just literally kind of trace over the pattern of the beetle. So I grab a blank thing, grab this, paste it in here, and then if I line it up correctly, Basically, do this a little bit. And then, of the two spot patterns, I will try my best here. Something kind of like this. I know that looks terrible, but it gives me a good foundation to work off of because now I can just kind of remove any areas that I don't want to be like that grayish color. And honestly, I don't even need the red anymore. So that actually worked out pretty well. do this. Let me check back in the chat. I, I've been like distracted for a bit now. Um, will the hissing cockroach be in the pack? Yes, the Madagascar hissing cockroach will be in the pack. Uh, Frontier f had flying birds and planet coaster too. That is true. They did have them there. Uh, North America music's a bop. Give us the birds of northern Quebec are. Yeah. Maybe. I will maybe do that for everyone. See what this looks like with a normal map on. Out of curiosity. Grab this, add a normal map texture. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. So provided I include the normal map, it'll, it'll look a bit better.
kind of like that, and then we will just add or fix up the handful of little areas like right here. Now we'll do this, give it a little bit better. I'm just trying to make this as readable as possible. Like, the texture doesn't really need to be that clean, because ultimately, like, you know, you're going to be looking at it from a pretty significant different or distance, so I'm not really as concerned. Just for shits and giggles, I am going to test that out, see how that looks. That looks pretty good. thing for now is the Encanto video gonna have I don't know to be honest like I, I wanted to because I still wanted to do that whole thing but then I was seeing so many people were doing the Encanto like it wasn't just me who like thought about it like I saw like five people doing the Encanto house so I was a bit iffy to you know actually you know do it but yeah I, I would maybe still be open to it I actually totally forgot about that um yeah, like Antonio's room. That's a pretty good idea. I wanted to make sure it was just different because I know a lot of people were already doing the, uh, um, you know, just the whole house. So that would be pretty good, though. Just, you know, limiting it to something like the room or something. I think that is good for the texture. Other than, let me see the legs. Make sure the legs are good. Yeah, that seems fine. So, this is mostly in a good position. So, I'm actually going to make green and a 040. We're finally on the 40th thing. And then this will be our texture. So then the last thing I gotta do is find some good mandibles for it. That'll be the only thing. Just add flower beds ever. Yeah, literally. Yeah, that is true. Just, yeah. The room's the size of the entire house. That's true. I did have an idea I wanted to do the, um... I want to make a mod that basically adds that moss procedural texture onto, like, just general items. Because I think that would be really cool. So, like, no matter how you turn it, it'll always have moss growing on it. So 
39 to 40. Unpack. That's not where I wanted to put it, so I messed that up. Model, I want it in 40. Now I have to go into 39. Uh, this is going to be a mess now. Oh wait, maybe not. I might have lucked out here. Yeah, because everything labeled 40 was luckily already done. That's all good, that's all good. And I can get rid of the 40 stuff. Well, actually, I'm going to need that model. Give me that model. Paste that in there. Alright, so, number one thing we got to do, paste in our new texture. So this will be the first thing. I guess that was pretty much it. Um, so I guess I could just kind of quickly do f the 40. But what were the antennas that I wanted? So I want to grab the antennas from one of my many, many other <laughs> insects. So what do I got? Yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to grab the antennas from this beetle. Uh, front antennas. I, I might just need to re-unwrap them so that they look appropriate on the new model. So we'll go into here, grab these files, delete them, because literally I, the only thing I needed from this model is the mandibles. you delete all of that and we're good Luckily, already sized correctly, so that's good. I can kind of move you out of the way. Delete you. Change you to be UV0. And combine you. So you have the right texture now. And you have the right texture now. So now I just gotta grab the mandibles. And basically. I guess configure it in a way that makes it so that it's just um, orange on the top and then so I guess something like this should suffice if I do that. Nope, gotta do the opposite. I messed up. So something like this. Orange at the top, black on the bottom. Cool. And then... Let's put these on the front. I'm gonna do this. Is this gonna work? Yes, it will. That's kinda nice. might even extend them a little bit. And then, honestly, the mouth of the... Um, 
American Bearing Beetle isn't as big. There we go. That looks much better. That looks really, really nice, actually. Do a cars build. I love that. Um, Frontier should add a feature where the animals poop. There's a chance to have flowers grow. That's kind of funny. Building radiator springs would certainly be something. So I think another thing I might do here. Just kind of extend the butt just a little bit. Kind of like so. Actually, it doesn't look like I actually need to extend the butt so much as I need to reduce the size of the wings. into it now. Oh, that's annoying. Never mind. My initial theory not really working here. Oh, or is it because of this? Yeah, why are they connected? I don't know when they got connected, but that isn't real. Let's see. Grab these verts. And just slightly move it in. You know, I'm kind of coming around to the, uh, the North American music. Some of it does kind of slap. Alright, but last thing we need to do is I need to figure out how big an American burying beetle is. So, we're just gonna assign that there. We can finally get rid of you. Because it looks like a decent size, but let's see. American Bearing Beetle size. They are 1.30 millimeters in length. I think that's roughly the same size as this one. Yeah, 35 millimeters. So that would be 0 0.03. Oh, they could be slightly larger, I guess. This is terrible. So they're gonna be slightly larger than the other beetle. Which is cool, because anything bigger means that I can actually, you know, see it in my zoo. The fun fact about American burying beetles, their entire life cycle is based around dead corpses. They're born in a dead corpse, and they breed in dead corpses, and they die in dead corpses. And that's why they're an endangered species, because they only live on Block Island, which is an island off the coast of Rhode Island. <laughs> Export done. Grab these, grab these, paste them. And let's let's finish this. Okay. So we're just 
just gonna delete anything that isn't the texture files. And I think, honestly, I might end today's stream after that, because it is four o'clock. Um, and I think we did, you know, pretty good. We got like four bugs, including a totally custom one, assuming I, this all goes well, but it, I don't see any issues with it. But, you know, I hope everyone enjoyed today's stream. We made all of them the dead corpses to survive. Yeah, literally. I wish there was an Elon mod. There's, uh, Monsoon was working on one, or was it Mark? It was either Mark or Monsoon has been working on a giant Elon for, like, like, literally, like, nine months now. Like, I've seen it in numerous stages, and it looks really, really good, but, like, they just never got it, you know, into Planet Zoo. It was just, because it's one of those, like, they're sculpting it from scratch kind of mods. But, let me see. American burying beetle. There it is. Check out this little guy. It's a very tiny beetle, but works pretty well. But, like I said, thank you all for watching today's stream. We have all of these to show for it for today's stream these are all the bugs that we made today we got three stag beetles and two other smaller beetles on top of our other large collection of different other beetles so you're not gonna be <laughs> uh you're not gonna be missing any shred of beetles when it comes to the exhibit prop pack it looks so cool though, like once you get like all of the beetles lined up or whatever, it's so cool to like see them all next to each other. But yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed today's stream. I know it was a little bit, you know, less exciting as like, you know, it always sometimes is. I need a co-host, that's, that's my thing is like if I'm not constantly talking to someone, I just like end up like drifting off into work mode. But... You know, definitely let me know any bug. You can um, post in the modding Discord any bugs that you want to see me do. And uh, I will, uh, you know, try to get them in the pack the best I can. So thank you all for watching. And uh, I'm going to see you guys later. So I'm going to end on uh, looking at the bugs and the not African penguin in the background. So bye, everyone.